Good morning, YouTube. Today, we're gonna install a Max Jax oh. lift. <laughs> why is he even here? <laughs> you wanted me. I know, I don't know why. So, are you recording all of the nefarious activities? My name is Dan, that's Adam and Mo. Mo is the star of the show, actually, see? He's holding on the floor. And over there are the Max Jax lifts. So we're gonna install those somewhere in this area generally, and then theoretically be able to lift up Ferraris and not break our backs. So that's the goal. Saw some videos of other people doing it. It doesn't look too terrible, but also it doesn't look super easy. So we'll see. Hopefully we don't screw it up. If you guys wanna support us, please like, share, and subscribe. Of course, we do appreciate that. And you can go buy parts and services for your cars through our website, normalguyssupercar.com. We do appreciate that as well. That actually really genuinely does help us. And finally, if you're looking for a supercar, Hit us up and we can hopefully help you out because we have a dealership, NG Supercars. Those cars are for sale right now. Yeah, both of them. We actually have a motorcycle right now. Uh, weird stuff happens when you own a dealership. People are like, hey, you want to trade this RV for a Ferrari? <laughs> weird stuff. Anyway, we have a motorcycle. It's a Harley Davidson. It's actually beautiful. Back to the main point. Let's install these Max Jacks. Okay, YouTube, we've got all the parts scattered throughout my garage. Parts here and parts there. Those are like the lift arms. There's the power unit. We got some other pieces and bolts and whatever. And then those, of course, are the actual lifts. One of those will go somewhere around here. And another one will go somewhere around there. And then car will go like that. Just like that. Uh, <laughs> it'll be the opposite of what Mo's doing right now. Mo? I, you don't have to get up. I'm just saying, hey, Mo, what's up? Yeah, you're a good boy. Okay. Mo's going to help us by getting in the way. So here we go. I need to get the instructions and make sure we do this right. Oh, the other thing is we do need a concrete drill. So I'm borrowing this giant Makita concrete drill because, yeah, we got to drill into the concrete, so that'll be fun. All right, YouTube, first step is super easy. Just install those roller wheels. That allows you to, of course, make it portable, theoretically. I don't know how much I'm really going to ever move it, but, I mean in theory yeah you could if you want so we had to lay down these and slide the lift head all the way up exposing the uh, hydraulic cylinder so now that we can install the quick connect fittings so we gotta install all these we gotta basically unscrew that and pop these on of course we need to put some teflon tape on this and then we'll get it tightened down okay we got the fittings on the, the quick connect he's tightening that one down Whew. Be careful of your fingers, I smashed them pretty good. That sucked. As you can see, my lovely assistant, Adam, has <laughs> is modeling our cart sans power unit. So this gets bolted to that, and then we have like a portable cart. I don't think too many people are moving these things out of the way all the time, but whatever, it's portable if you want it to be. Good luck with that. Okay, YouTube, so it, sho it shows that these two lift posts need to be between 105 and 135 inches apart from the outside and then to do a dry run. So we're gonna install the arms and then make sure that we can actually get like a 360 on the lift. That would be basically a car that's probably gonna be, like that kind of designs gonna be the most common thing we're gonna do. So let's try that. All right, YouTube, we're taking like a little intermission. <laughs> we're gonna try and push start the Harley because the battery's dead and- We think the battery's dead. We're yeah, not we really don't even sure. we know really. We know so little about this thing. We, we are ignorant of Harley Davidson. So I'm just gonna set the camera on the ground and you can see our misfortunes. Okay. <laughs> okay, YouTube, that was a terrible idea. Now we're just exhausted. Okay, we're back in the garage. We gotta test fit a car. Test fit is good, so these positions are great. And so now we just gotta remove those and get the tiles out and then time to bust out the Makita. Okay, YouTube, had to make a Home Depot run. Got my 7 8 inch drill bit. So now we just got to drill it. It said you can leave it in place and kind of use those as a guide. We got to be super careful not to chew up the metal. I think I'm probably going to do that just because it does keep it in the right place. So I'll probably mark some stuff just to make sure it doesn't get wonked out of alignment. And there we go. We have the big Makita masonry drill hammer drill so this ought to be fun all right we've got my five holes drilled so now we got to set the concrete anchors basically you measure out so that this is five eighths of an inch 
and we're gonna hammer it down until it sets on the washer. Then we're gonna tighten down this bolt and it should flare out this bottom portion of it, anchoring it into place, theoretically. So we'll give that a try. And I'm gonna wear some safety glasses because we're banging on concrete that's been drilled so it'll probably flake away. We got one anchor down. Whew. One more to go. Whew. Okay, YouTube. That's a workout, let me tell you. Everything's heavy, and you're doing like 90 foot pounds of torque. And now they're mounted, now we just gotta bleed them, and then it works, I guess. We'll find out. Okay, we filled up the appropriate amount of ATF into the reservoir. So I'm gonna wheel it over there, plug it in, and then we can try bleeding these, and then I think then it's ready to rock and roll. Okay, to bleed it, apparently you connect up the hydraulic lines, which I've done, and now you just take this little cap right here, this is the bleed screw, and you just loosen it. Oh, that's funny, it's like rotating. I guess I'll have to hold it. But anyway, you loosen it, you raise it all the way, tighten it once it's all the way up at the top, you run it for a couple seconds, and it should push out any air. Okay, here goes nothing, apparently. Do I see any leaks? Okay, no. Oh, oh, that one's starting to go. Oh, there they go. Hey, hey, they're raising. Oh, oh, I see fluid coming out. Oh, still air in that one. You can hear it hissing. All right, we have it working now. Oh, yeah. I can see some fluid running out from that side. Apparently, that's the top. Okay, dry run success. It's been bled. I think it's time to actually test it out with a real car. Oh, boy. Now's where I get a little nervous. All right, YouTube, I was just about to lift the 59 and I lined up all the arms and everything and then I noticed that the lift arms aren't adjustable or the the pad isn't so yeah I need to get some pucks I ordered some pucks they'll be here in two days so I guess I'll have to continue this video in two days uh, once I have those pucks because basically what's gonna happen is the arm itself is gonna hit the carbon fiber and crack it before the actual pad touches the frame so that's a problem. Day two. Good morning, YouTube. It's been a few days, and I now have my little lift pucks. I actually bought a couple different ones. I, I, you know, cars of varying heights or whatever, we can make them work. So let's put these on there. We'll put them on the pads, get them aligned right, and then make sure this lift actually lifts a car, which is the whole point. Yeah. This is a pretty good test because that's like a four and a half thousand pound car, and this is rated for six thousand pounds. So we're putting it up near its limits. Obviously, we're not going to be lifting up my truck or anything, but you know pretty much most cars we could lift up, which is, you know, that's all I really care about. Okay, jack points are in the right spots. Get the pads on. Okay, push the magic button and we'll test it real quick. Let's still check everything. Good, it's not resting on the carbon fiber. That's very important. We got a gap. That's what we want. We want to see a gap. It's not the fastest lift, but it's working and it's level. Okay, put back down to the locks. 
And, well, there you have it. Holy shit, my car is lifted. <laughs> That's awesome. And just looking at it from here, I can tell garage door will definitely clear no problem well there you have it i've been waiting for this for like 25 years i can't believe i have a lift in my garage obviously this is not ideal but it is very good it's a reasonable height you know i think we can do something like sit on it with a chair like that chair for example and that should be plenty of space so uh i think we'll be able to do stuff like basic work work on you know oil changes things like that <sighs> I have a lift in my garage. This is so nice, so cool. And it feels stable. I mean, like the cars, it's not moving. Like no wobble at all. That's, that's awesome, very good. I must say I am very pleased. So anyway, this is the Max Jax and it takes the better part of a day to install. If you're like me, you'll probably need to get some like hockey pucks or you know lift pucks to be able to lift up your cars because the low cars kind of a little bit of a problem. They're still pretty expensive. I think it was like three and a half thousand bucks or so. But if, you, if you're like me and you have a lower garage, a lower ceiling, this is about as good as it's gonna get. So without having another two plus feet of garage, I can't fit a full lift. You can see a regular lift could get the car a little bit higher, but yeah, not a whole lot. You know, I don't think it will fit an actual two post lift, so well. There you go. And supposedly it's portable, but I think that's kind of, mm, probably not gonna be moving around much. I mean, I guess maybe once in a while I'd consider moving that post out of the way if I really need the space, but the other post I probably never will move. There's no reason to. And I guess having the hoses, you know, be able to disconnect and move them around. Well, maybe I'll do that someday. I don't know. Uh, like, share, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Support us by going to normalguyssupercar.com. We do appreciate when you guys do that. That does help keep this channel going. So thank you so much, but that's gonna do it for this video. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for watching. We're going to be doing a lot of cool car stuff, so you're going to want to stay tuned. It's going to be sweet. <laughs>